Okay, well here's something a bit different. <laughs> this is a very early Hi-Fi cassette deck made by Amstrad. This is a model number 770 and these were produced in the mid-1970s. Now, before everyone jumps on me in the comments and says that's not Hi-Fi, that's cheap Amstrad, Amstrad crap. Yes, these were budget Hi-Fi separates and Amstrad made a whole range of these in the mid-70s. I don't know an exact date on this. I do know that the Model 7000 came out in 1974. So this was this would have been slightly later than that. And I, I, I have a sneaky suspicion that this probably came out around about 1976. So why are we looking at a really ancient hi-fi cassette deck then? Well, I was browsing eBay the other day and I saw one of these and it triggered a memory. This was, or this model was the very first hi-fi cassette deck that I ever purchased. This Amstrad Model 7070. Uh, now, yeah, okay, these things couldn't compete anywhere near with, say, an Akai or, or a Pioneer from that period. But then those decks were far, far more expensive. <clears throat> to give an example, I don't remember exactly what I paid for mine. I reckon I bought mine in 77, something like that, 78. But I do know that in 1977, I was earning the princely sum of 23 pounds a week. And that was my salary for an apprentice. I was I started my apprenticeship in 1975, so that's what I was earning back then. Now I reckon, looking at the prices of other decks from that period, this would probably have been around between 50 and 70 pounds uh, at the time. Uh, now, <laughs> I picked this one off, <laughs> up off of eBay and the guy was selling it for spares or repairs and uh, uh, I got this one for the tidy little sum of 15 pounds plus shipping. So, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm not expecting it to work. Uh, it'll almost certainly need belt change, uh, assuming the motor runs. The guy did say that it powered up, but one of the VU meters goes full scale. Well, that's not an uncommon fault with these things. It could simply be just pots needing deoxin or something like that. But uh, it's in very good cosmetic condition. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. It's gonna need, I'm going to give it a good old scr uh, scrub up first and then we'll clean the heads and the pinch roller. And then we'll put some power on it and see what it does. But yeah, it's uh, it, basically it's a bit of nostalgia from my youth. <laughs> and I also thought it would be good fun to see if we could get this thing working. There, there does appear to be a fault with the door. When you try and eject it, the door only sort of goes half cocked. So it, you can open it. You pull it like that. So what I suspect is that the door possibly is broken. The plastic hinge on the door is broken. But again, that that could probably be fixed without too much problem. So yeah, I'll get, give it a wipe down, clean the heads and uh, we'll power it up. Okay, I've given the front a bit of a clean up and the case and it's, it's come up quite nicely. Oh, the heads weren't particularly clean and the tape transport appears to work okay because I powdered the play up to clean the capstan. So we'll turn it on and, the, and straight away both the U meters go hard up against the stop. So I've got the line out turned down, so I've got my speakers plugged in. Yeah, so obviously that's uh, going to need attention. So uh, we'll whip the top off and have a look inside. Okay, I got the top off and I found the first thing I found floating around in there was this, which I think is a piece of the door mechanism hinge. So that explains why the door doesn't open properly. I flooded the line in and line out pots with uh, deoxit and wiggled them around a lot and now what happens when you turn it on is it's just one channel doing it which is what the seller said it did so there's obviously still something wrong so I'll turn it off bend the needle around the stop but uh, now I've got the cover off we can have a look inside so I've turned it around because it's easier for you to get a look at the, co at the cassette mechanism but uh, so there you go that's uh, what, 43, 44 year old electronics for you. <laughs> no double sided boards in here. There are actually a couple of uh, integrated circuits, but I think that's about it. Yeah, so it's um, it's all easy to get to. I can easily disconnect the the U meters, that's this, this plug here, so I can check out the cassette mechanism. But um, I think that 
that one of the first things I'm going to do is replace these uh, three capacitors over here. Uh, they're on the they're on the main power supply board. Now this one's okay. These two are definitely bulging on the top. Don't know where, how well that will come out on the camera, but these 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 are there's a, a certainly bulging. So I think the electrolytics gone in these. <clears throat> so they're two thousand. These two are two thousand two. 2200 microfarad 16 volt and that's 2200 microfarad 10 volt so i think we'll whip all of those out and change them before we go any further with it really the rest of the caps on the board look okay you can't see anything obviously wrong but obviously you can't tell just by looking at them but what i think i will do now is try the cassette mechanism i'm going to disconnect the uh, vu meter so we're not constantly wrapping the uh, mini needles around the stop, but um, I'll bring you in for a close up on the cassette mechanism. There is, as far as I can tell, <clears throat> only one belt, which, and then these various different uh, rubber wheels do the rewind and fast forward. But the belt seems to be okay. Um, I mean, I, I may well play, replace it anyway if, I could, if I've got one of the right size, but it does seem to be okay. So the next thing I think I'll do is uh, disconnect the VU meters and then we will try the cassette mechanism. Right, so let's try play first. Yeah, play works and the tape counter is moving, so that's good. Fast forward, yep. Yeah. Rewind, yes. Well, that's a, that's a good sign. I don't want to say I don't want to leave it on for too long powered up because <clears throat> there is obviously a problem at the moment with it. But yes, the cassette mech is appears to be working. So yeah, that's 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 really good news. So <coughs> really need to before I do anything else with it, I really need to replace those power uh, power supply capacitors. The other thing, I was very lucky. I was actually able to get the service manual for it off of eBay, and that's got all the schematics in it circuit diagrams and exploded view so that's really really helpful and parts of this too well we've had a bit of luck with our <laughs> 44 45 year old hi-fi cassette deck i changed out the capacitors i'll show you that let me change the camera angle there's our three brand new 2200 microfarad capacitors they're a bit of a bugger to get out because I don't know whether you can see this this sort of creamy coloured substance. That's actually a fixative and adhesive which they put around the capacitors to stop them wobbling around. Um, and it's supposed to be sort of flexible, but after 40 odd years it goes quite hard and that's a bit of a bugger to you have to cut through that with a scalpel before you can actually get the old capacitors out. However, it didn't make any difference. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, but the point was once I got the old capacitors out, they were bulged on the bottom as well as the top, so they were very definitely going. So that was that. Uh, I thought, okay, right, well, let's have a look at the underside of the circuit board. Now this deck is actually very well designed. There's this plate that you can take off, which covers the basically the underside of the main circuit board, and you can pretty much get to all of the solder joints. So I uh, had a look at it, under the magnifier and I couldn't really sort of see anything obvious immediately I mean the soldering is definitely not the best in the world but when I had a look at this switch that's in the middle of the board here let's come down on that there we go there we go and get me a pointy stick there was some very very dodgy soldering on, on, on these, these joints along here, four of them, which they were, uh, they were what solder there was on them was dull gray, as opposed to the shiny, shiny solder of all the other joints. And a couple of them, there was, you, there, you could see the hole in the printed circuit board. And it was almost like the, it, the, the lead coming through from the switch was just touching. It wasn't actually soldered in place. Now I've come across this kind of thing before and, uh, you know, it's a if if you think it's a bad joint, then it probably is a bad joint, um, and you f and you redo it, which is what I did with these, and it makes absolutely no difference. However, in this instance, after I did that and then tried it again, it appears to now work. Now it's still in pieces at the moment because the uh, cassette door, which is this little thing here, 
is in the process of having its legs fixed. Now, this has been repaired before, and someone had actually done quite a good job. I don't know if you can see it, but they'd actually drilled through the leg and put a reinforcing pin. I don't know whether that's going to come out on the camera through, which is uh, on both of them. So I've basically, one of them had broken off completely. I've, I've used um, JB World to reattach them, and I'm letting that, it's dry, but it needs to, to really harden off. So, uh, We've still got to, we've got to wait for that before I can put it all back together. But it will run without the cassette door, so let's turn it on. And if you remember before, the left-hand VU meter just went full scale. Now they spike when you first turn it on, but I'm not too uh, concerned about that. But it's all sitting down nicely and there's no horrible racket coming out of the speakers. So there you go. Actually working. Now, like I said, I bought mine, I'm fairly certain in 1977. So let's say this one is of the same age. So 77, so. So that's what, 44 years old? This deck is 44 years old. Sounds pretty good for a 44 year old cassette deck. <laughs> okay, it's only through these little tiny creative labs portable speakers, but <coughs> now I don't have a wow and flutter meter or any way of accurately testing the speed of this. Um, let's turn it out a bit. But to my ears, it sounds fine. So I'll try various different types of music through it because some music is much better at showing you that <coughs> the speed is off than, than others. But it, it works. I'm, I'm just amazed at this. It just, it, it just works fine, you know. So yeah, there you go. Amstrad Model 7070 from round about 1977. All back working again. And the front panel's cleaned up really nicely as well. I couldn't get the tarnish off to start with, and in the end I ended up just using some household domestic cleaner that you like clean, you know, work surfaces with and fridges and stuff. And that really brought the uh, brushed aluminium front up nicely. So. Anyway, let's stop that. That's it for now. Um, I'll probably do a little bit more once I've got it all back together with hopefully the working door. Well, it's finished and I think it came out fairly well. Certainly cleaned up very nicely. We have a look at the front there. Yeah, the front panel cleaned up nicely. So did all the, the knobs and everything. Just used ordinary everyday household cleaner and a toothbrush to scrub all the, the knobs and they all cleaned up really well. The cassette door was a bit of a bugger to put it mildly, but then it is 40 five-year-old plastic and it's been repaired at least twice so it doesn't fit right but it does actually now eject which it didn't do before so we'll whip that tape out because that will definitely get us contact matches take all those off i'll go and stick a youtube audio library tape in there Turn some power on the amp. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad for a for an amp uh, for a cassette deck of this age. I did find an inspection sticker inside, which was dated twelve ten seventy six. So that tells us that. I was roughly right with regard to the age of the deck. 19, this is obviously made in 1976. So yeah, it doesn't sound too bad for a, <laughs> for a really old hi-fi deck. And I'm really pleased because it is cosmetically in really nice condition. And um, as I said, this is just a nostalgia trip for me, you know, so stop that. Um, this is just a nostalgia trip and it's just a, a really nice to actually have one of these that I had, you know, well, I think it was 77 when I bought it. So um 44 years ago you know it's just it's just excellent so anyway <laughs> i i uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and found it interesting to have a look at something this old that still actually works 
So thanks very much for watching. Cheers.